share with you a story about the song, There's Power in the Blood. Uh, when I was traveling to India uh, to, to join a missionary over there, um, we were traveling up this road, this long winding road, and there was no radio service, so um, the interpreter that we were with, he um, told me to break out his guitar, like in the back seat of this little Honda Accord, um, traveling up these mountains, and I knew about two songs, and he told me the chords for Power in the Blood, and we're, we're playing them and singing them and um, teaching me a song, literally as we drive, teaching me how to play this song on guitar, like he's driving, trying to teach me. And we get to this little village way up on top um, by Tibet. Um, we get to this little village, and this, this village had never seen a white person ever, ever, ever. So we get into this village, and um, this, this old lady um, who was dealing with a lot of physical issues, um, we asked what we can do for her. You know, we'll pray for you. Um, you know, we'll pray for healing. She said, I want someone to sing There's Power in the Blood with me. And that was literally, I knew, like, now this is the fourth song on guitar that I knew. So we sang that song. It was just, it was a phenomenal. And every time I sing that song now, I'm reminded of that, that old lady um, and her request for that song and how God worked through that. This morning we are continuing along in our last week of our Be Still and Stop sermon series. Um, and we have got to Joshua 10, verses 12 through 15. Follow along with me now as we read the Word of God. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Ashalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the day of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel, then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gildan. I am sure there is many times in our lives we wished for, for time to stand still. Maybe, maybe it was a time when you all were dealing with a stressful situation. Maybe it was a happy situation that we wished that time would stand still. Maybe it was that time you, you first held your spouse's hand. Maybe it was that first date with your loved one. Maybe it was a time when, when your child was first born and that first feeling when you, when you hold your newborn baby close against your skin. Maybe it was that moment when your child's sick and snuggles into you real tight knowing that, that the only person in the world, the only human in the world that that child wants at that very moment is you. Maybe it's after winning a big game or a big tournament or maybe a, a state title or a district championship game. Maybe the moment in time was when the crop prices and the, 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 the livestock prices were at an all-time high for a moment. Maybe, maybe those were all glimpses of a period in your life that you wanted time to stand still. Joshua was at a moment in his life where he knew he needed time to slow down or even stand still. See, we all do wish that we could stop time. We all do wish that, that there would be these moments that would live on forever, these feelings that you could feel forever, those precious memories that you could feel as if they were right now each and every day of your life. That moment when we indeed do wish that time would stop, that, that for a moment we could hit the pause button, like that movie years and years ago, um, I think it was called Click, with the guy with the remote control that could fast forward and reverse, and then sometimes he could just hit pause on that remote. We wish we had that remote control that would control our lives, that we could put it in slow motion, that we could hit pause, that we could just have this feeling forever. In the scripture today, we see Joshua praying for a moment like that. A moment in which time would stand still. A moment that he wanted this day to last for all eternity. In chapter 9 of Joshua, we learned that there's this treaty going on between the Gibeonites and the tribes of Israel. See, Joshua doesn't think at this time that they're, they're very far away from, from completing this treaty 
He sees peace in the future. But what he doesn't know is that the Gibbonites are actually really, really, really close to them, planning attack on the vulnerable nation of Israel. See, in this, the Gibbonites were about to break their treaty when they knew that the armies were on letdown, thinking that, that everything was about to become peaceful. And soon, all the rulers around, around this area that they're in would hear about the Gibbonites about to break this treaty, and they, because of this, would become very afraid. So not only would this happen to the nations of Israel, but all the nations surrounding them would begin to fear for their treaties too could be broken. So Joshua, who is, who is this um, great military mind, this general, this leader, he comes up with a plan. What he's going to do is he's going to sneak up to where the Gibbonites are camping out. But there was one problem. In order for him to execute this attack, in order for him to execute this plan, he needed what we all need sometimes. He needed more time. So he asked for it. In fact, he almost literally demands it, saying son, not son like, like a child's son, but son like the one on the sky. He says, son, stop. And moon, you stop your rotation as well. He literally commands out to the Lord that he wants the sun to stop. He knew that he would not complete this mission in the 24 hours that our day reflects. Now, we don't know exactly what God had done that day. We don't know if, if he had literally stopped the earth's rotation. We don't know if he refracted sunlight from the other side of the world in a beautiful way to this time or this place. But we do know what God had done, and that was make the day longer. See, the importance here really isn't how he did it. It isn't how he refracted the light or made the earth slow or, or whatever else he could have done or that people believe that he done that day or did that day. But the importance really is that God did it. That God had listened to Joshua and knew Joshua needed more time. And because Joshua was faithful, he gave Joshua exactly what he needed gave him more time. Now I want to tell you something I found rather interesting about this. Now some people, some, some critics of the Bible would say, there's no way possible that God could make the day longer or shorter. Sure, maybe the sun could have set at different times, but there's always got to be 24 hours. See, many people will argue this story and other similar stories amongst the Bible, but I want to tell you some tidbits. There's a record from an ancient Chinese emperor, emperor Yao, that recorded a strange occurrence in the same time period that Joshua would have been at war, he recorded that the day was longer. That there was more sunlight in that period than there ever was before. Herodotus, the Greek astrologer, wrote of an extra long day that occurred the same time that Joshua was writing this. The Aztecs in Mexico reported that the sun stood in the year of seven rabbits, which historically dates to the point that Joshua would have been at war. The Aztecs reported that the day was longer. The list goes on and on and on about historical references to a time frame in which Joshua would have been at war that, that non-religious non secular groups would report that the day was was longer, that the sun seemed to, for, for some rare occurrence, be longer. Now, if you're going to look at the Bible and say, I deny that, then you have to go to a lot of other sources and say that they're wrong as well. The fact was, God did make that day longer. History and secular groups will point back that a miracle did happen in this time of Joshua. Now, if there was ever a generation that is more skeptical about miracles, it has to be, to be my generation. A generation that, that many of you are in. I remember growing up, 
people would, would confer to the Bible and say that the miracles that happen here are just fables. They're just things that we exaggerate to get a point of how wonderful this God thing that we put together really could be. We don't believe, or, or people in my generation would say, they don't believe that miracles still exist today. Well, here is the news flash there that the God hasn't changed. The God that all of these people concur and confirm that, that the day was longer on that period of time is still the same God that exists today, that we serve today, that we pray for miracles to happen today. The same God is the same God that heals people today. The same God that made that day longer for Joshua is the same God that we pray to for healing each and every day. Yet why? Why does a generation tend not to believe in this? See, it's also a fact that my generation is also more conscious about time. Now maybe there's relation there. A generation that's that's conscious about, about how much time we have left on this earth and how we utilize that time is the same generation that's maybe a little bit skeptical about a miracle that happened in time. See, my generation is a generation that becomes slaves to the clocks. We see that we have a limited amount of time and we want to do all these things in that limited amount of time. See, we, my generation, tries to beat the clock. We get up early, we go to bed late, and in some amount of time in between there, we try, to, we try to go into this coma of sleep to feel rested so we can get back and do these thousands and thousands of things that we feel God is calling us to do. See, we all, not just my generation, are conscious about time in some way or another. We're conscious about our lives and the time and the things we do. We're conscious about the way the clock works and how we work within that clock. See, someplace down the line, we read something that says uh, how to help you save time, how to be more punctual, how to help you uh, better organize your time, and we feel like, like we need to be slaves to that message. Everyone has, has one of these devices these days, a cell phone, where I can go in here and I can put my calendar in there and I can put, at 9.30, I'll be at church service at Salem, and then 10.30, I'll be at a consistory meeting downstairs, and at noon, I'll hopefully be having supper with my wife, and then at 1 o'clock is my nap time, and at 3 o'clock, because I take two-hour naps on Sundays, don't judge me, at 2 o'clock, I'll wake up and I'll probably watch some sport form of, of sports, the Olympics this afternoon. And at 5 o'clock, I'll begin preparing my meal for, for my family. And at 6 o'clock, we'll eat. Or actually, at 6 o'clock, my son will eat. And then at 7 o'clock, me and my wife will eat. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll have the kid in bed. And at 9 o'clock, we'll watch a TV show. Tonight, Alaska, The Last Frontier, we'll watch that at 9 o'clock. Actually, we watch it at 9.30 because we DVR it so I can fast forward through the commercials because I don't want to waste my time watching commercials time we want to hit pause we want to be conscious about our time and exactly doing things at the utmost priority but what is really the priority in our time see joshua probably had these thoughts as well. Now, I'm sure Joshua didn't think about DVRing Alaska, the last frontier. I'm sure Joshua didn't have a plan of every second, but Joshua had laid out a plan on how he would attack, how he would pursue this sneak attack. And when he looked at his eye calendar, he realized he needed more time. He had no idea what kind of victory would happen that day. He had no idea when he was fighting that God would be making up one of the biggest miracles that would happen in the Bible, that God would slow time. Now the longest day in your life is that day when you work the hardest, when you think the clearest, when you accomplish the most, when you live the noblest, and you can look back at that day and say, today was a good day. When you can look back in that day and say, I've worked my hardest. I've done everything I could to utilize the time that God has given me today. That day, or those types of days, are usually the days that you can say, those were my best days. Now those days make the difference between a miracle and nothing happening at all. 
Now, earlier I said we serve a God who still gives us miracles. Now, think about your day. Think about the best day that you've ever had. It probably involves something with, with getting up and accomplishing something in your life. It probably involves something with your family. It hopefully involves something with God. That kind of day is a day you can reflect back on and say, today was one of my best days. See, that, that is a miracle. Those days that we say, this is my best day, that is a day that God says, I'll slow time. I'll let you remember the miracle of you being here freely on this day for each and every day that you live. That day when you say, God, just, just take control of the time. I don't want to look at that thing on the wall. I just want to feel it right here. I just want to hit that pause button and live this time for exactly what it is, and that's a blessing, a blessing that God has given each and every one of us. Think about what Joshua had went through that day. Now, we didn't read the story of Joshua and the hailstorm. A hailstorm had come through, and the hailstones were so big and so powerful, they struck down his enemies, not hitting any of Joshua's warriors. We didn't read about that miracle. We didn't see the hailstorm take out of enemies. We didn't see the day that the sun would, would last longer. We didn't see the only day in history that's recorded throughout several areas at this time that the moon had changed its pattern. That it never happened again after that, but astrologers of ancient Greece would say that that day the moon changed its pattern. See, God, God is never on our clock. God never has one of these sitting up right in front of the pearly gates, and he looks at it and he says, all right, it's your time. See, God doesn't know time like we as humans have labeled it. He isn't bothered by our, our busy schedules and what's on your eye calendar or, or your Google calendar or whatever you use. He isn't bothered by how much stuff you put on there because God sees time only by how you utilize time for God. He wants us to be committed to his schedule, to his clock, to his time. Verse 14 said, There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Now notice, Scripture today didn't say that God had actually stopped time. It only said that the Lord listened to the voice of man. In other words, what Joshua had asked for, the Lord had listened. So we ask ourselves, how does this all happen? How does this miracle of what Joshua experienced of this long day happen to me? How does the miracle of time relate to me in present day? See, the first thing we need to realize is we need to have Joshua's warrior mentality. Now, I'm not saying go home and, and, and take off your, your, your secular clothes and put on some war garb and paint your face. Not that kind of warrior mentality. But see, Joshua was a warrior in his faith. No matter how bad things have got with breaking of treaties and going to war, Joshua kept his faith strong and the message that God had given him. He knew that he had to somehow overcome the limits of time. And the only way that overcoming the limits of time was going to be asking God to do so. And you have to believe that no matter what God had done that day, Joshua's faith in him had to seem somewhat crazy. Now, now I have to admit, if I was in battle and one of my leaders say, don't worry about time today. I've asked the Lord to stop it. Now me, as a, as a peon, as a little soldier, as a guy underneath, far underneath all these leaders, I'm going to scratch my head at that and say, hey, you're asking me to risk my life, to go out here and, and go into battle with you, and, and your only plan is that, that God stops the time? I'm going to think my leaders are kind of whack jobs. I'm going to have to think that there's no hope in us winning this battle if the battle plan is that God will stop time. If nothing else, the guys around him has to wonder 
that how can Joshua have the faith to rely on God's power to do this? But see, Joshua was a warrior. He believed in something so powerful that he actually made it happen. He had actually made something that nobody has ever seen before or since happen through his faith. Through his faith that God would listen. And that has to be our faith as well. We have to believe that, that no matter what, if we go to God as the warrior that Joshua was and say, God, I need this. I've been faithful to you, and I need this. No matter how crazy, no matter how big of a whack job you may seem at that moment, that God will have the power to bring the most powerful things in effect, to stop time, to stop the rotation of the sun, to, to reflect, reflect, blah, blah, to reflect the sun back onto Joshua's battle, to stop the rotation of the earth, to change the pattern of the moon. God has that power. Why? Because he can. That's the mystery of our faith. Why? Because he's God. Take a look at all of the miracles in the Bible. They were one-time events, things that we say can never happen again. Take a look, the look of, of a 90-year-old woman becoming a mom for the first time, or a burning bush that was never consumed by fire, or a dead rod that would turn into a serpent, or plagues, or manna falling to the ground from the sky, or, or a talking donkey, and I'm not talking about Shrek. Look at all the miracles of the Bible, of lion's dens, and, and falling walls, and the healing of the blind that Jesus did. All of this was because of God. All of this was one-time things that people say, I don't believe it because it never happened again. Well, that is the way that God works. God works in these miracles, special occurrences that can only happen to one person, to us, because he uniquely identifies us through our miracles. But all of these took place to desperate people, to desperate people that needed God so bad that they could not even put their finger on how bad they actually needed him. They thought their day was done, and they, they thought that time, as they knew it, was over. And then God shows up. And it's like that, that Buffalo Wild Wings commercial where the, the guys are sitting in the bar and the game's about over and they, it's, it, the game's um, within, within a couple points and they, they push that bus, Buffalo Wild Wings button and something crazy like the sprinkler head comes up and the guy trips and it goes into overtime. That's a little bit of an analogy of what God does. Is he can hit that button and give you more time because that's the power of that God has. Now this house today is filled with people who are, who are maybe in circumstances just like Joshua, who are fighting battles that they think they cannot overcome without more time. See, there are people in this house right now that, are, that need healing of the bodies, that need healing of the minds, healing of the souls, and all of that can only come with more time. All of that can only come through something divine. Not of our power, but of God's. Only because we serve and love a God who is big enough to listen to our request. A God who is big enough to make time stand still. There's a miracle in time, and, and God can stretch it a whole lot further than you ever imagine, that you ever believe He can. And that's our hope. That God helps us stretch each and every second of our lives. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are big enough. You are strong enough. You are devoted enough to listen to us, to listen to our request and process them according to your will. Father, I pray. I pray for time, and not more of it, but that we utilize what we have that we can be faithful warriors of you and put our time to use, that in our time that we, we glorify you and that those will be the best days of our life. Those will be the days that we win the battle. Days that without a doubt that secular groups can come to us and say, there is a God and he does love us. That's our prayer for time this week. Heavenly Father, be with us in time. I ask you this in your name. Amen. Our praise song and closing song is Cornerstone. You can follow along with the words on the screen.